Good morning. The word for you today. Today is, um, today is Thursday, May the 2nd, and our devotion today is titled Start at His Feet. Um, so our scripture passage comes out of the book of Ruth, chapter 3, and starting in chapter, starting, we're going to start a little bit earlier. We're going to start in verse 1, and it says, One day Ruth's mother-in-law Naomi said to her, My daughter, I must find a home for you where you will be well provided for. Now Boaz, with whose women you have worked, is a relative of ours. Tonight, you'll be winnowing barley on the threshing floor. Wash, put on perfume, and get dressed in your best clothes. Then go down to the threshing floor, but don't let him know you are there until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, note the place where he is lying, then go and uncover his feet and lie down. He will tell you what to do. Now, this is a story of how Ruth meets Boaz, or more, more specifically, how Ruth courts Boaz. So whenever we read the book of Ruth, I think that sometimes we focus in on the fact that this is a prequel to David. This is a story that we read as a, as a lead up, a build up to the big reveal of King David entering into the, entering into the world. But what's important here, I think, is the way that God uses unlikely people. Um, shocking, I know, that's not something I talk about a lot on these devotionals, um, but I think that this is something that the Book of Ruth particularly does really well at. Ruth is a Moabite. Now, we hear that term a lot, but it doesn't really make sense to us. So let's put it in simpler, in simpler forms. This is the equivalent of somebody from Oklahoma and somebody from Missouri or Arkansas having a conversation. And let's say that I had moved to, to Arkansas. I'd, I'd had my, my kids marry people there, and then my kids died, and, and then this Arkansas person comes back to live with me. They are just over the river. They're just over the border. But the difference is that these, are, these people have a worldview that is completely separate. Moab was a pagan religion. Um, that's, an, that's a weird word to use because it's not quite accurate, but Moab didn't worship the God of the Israelites. They worshiped the God of the Moabites. They worshiped, um, they worshiped a God of war and conquest that was specifically named different. So why is that important? It's important because Ruth should not have had any part in God's plan. Ruth shouldn't have had any part in what the God of Israel was doing. At this time, in this time frame, uh, ancient peoples believed that the gods were regional. What that meant was that if the God of the Israelites was in Oklahoma, then if you went to Texas, he no longer had power. If you went to California, your God couldn't do anything because it wasn't his domain. The gods in this worldview, which not, I don't agree with it, but this is how they believed. They believed that when you went over the river, when you went into this claimed territory, into this occupied territory, what happened was you were becoming, um, you were becoming subject to a new God. So, Mo so Moab, whose patron god is Chemosh, has a, has a woman leave the protection of Chemosh and come into the protection of the god of Israel. And she somehow is told by her mother-in-law to go and to, to go and to place herself in subjugation to a man whom she doesn't know. She has no relation to. She has no idea if he is a safe person to do this with. And she sits at his feet. And she sleeps there. She rests there. She waits until he, he awakes. It's a vulnerability unlike any other. It is a woman who most likely doesn't speak the same language as Boaz. Or probably speaks it pretty poorly at that who is terrified because she's in an unfamiliar place 
and she decided to follow her mother-in-law. And this is the woman that we're focusing on. This is the story that we're focusing on. So when I read this, when I read the way that God's, that God's word describes Ruth, describes Boaz, I'm reminded that, I'm reminded of two things. First is that God uses unlikely people. He uses, the, he uses Texans just as well as he uses Oklahomans. But more importantly, God uses people who are willing to put their own self in a lesser position for his glory. Have a nice day.